what's up dudes, Kublikon here, and welcome to, well, it's a thought diary. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about some stuff. Um, typically, being a Saturday, we'd be doing something like Skyrim and whatnot, and honestly, I've actually been having some trouble figuring, you know, like, moving some of the Skyrim stuff up to standard, and I was thinking about it, I was like, I really miss doing these. Um, I really enjoyed those times I did, and I ended up taking a lot of time and a lot of thought, and that's important because having thought, you know, putting things into the vlog kind of thing makes it definitely more interesting. Um, but today, I just had one of those days where you run into things that really just upset you. And so I felt like it might be a good idea. Yeah, whatever. It might be a good idea to have a faster than light, you know, thought diary to kind of talk about it. It's, you guys do wonders for me to kind of help me calm down at times. Um, I was playing this with Bernana, and sorry Bernana for totally killing um, our playthrough that we were doing, but it's been a little while since we've done it, and um, I would like to uh, just kind of fly a ship. You know what? A ship I have not flown in forever is just the Kestrel. Six unique aliens, repair, you know what? That's great. And this we're going to call, and this is related to what we're talking about today, which is um, how to help a fr a fr a fr how to help a friend that's what today is about um so specifically this has to do with um now this is involving relationships uh just to calm everybody's nerves right now if there anybody knows i have a girlfriend and we are super in love this is about other people she and i are great and they're doing wonderfully and if ever, any of you guys played faster than light it's a great game. It's totally fits with the permadeath roleplay kind of thing. You got characters, you name them shit, and they're cool people. Lombard, Kara, Shelton. Awesome. Um, at the, uh, the moment, though, let's go talk about some, how to help friends. Specifically, friends who are in relationships that are bad for them. You see, this is something that you don't ever really s expect to happen to this friend. This friend is really self-assured, they're very smart, you know, like, this is the kind of person that you'd like, alright, if I ever had to leave someone alone for something, um, this would be the person I'd leave alone, this is the person I'd trust. Well, good. That's a good friend. That's a good person to have in your life. Um, the problem that one person might find themselves stuck on is that, um, sometimes that friend makes mistakes, the same way everybody else makes mistakes, uh, and somebody's on my ship. The same way that everybody else makes mistakes. Um, this guy needs help. So, yes, we're like, what? What's Kublai? What are you referring to in this? Well, the thing is, is that when somebody is with somebody they shouldn't be with, there's a lot of arguments on how you should treat them. Now, think about it. Uh, let's say your best friend is dating a girl or a guy that kind of treats them like dirt. Not the kind of, like, the dirt where it's like, you know, they want to be treated like dirt. The kind of dirt where they're like, wow, you are an asshole for treating anyone ever this way. Why is my friend dating you? And it gets very confusing. Like, why would your friend ever date this person? Well, it can actually stick into something biological. Which is where, in their mind, they meet someone who makes them happy. And that happy person really clicks with them. And so they're like, I'm gonna go and hang out with this person as much as possible. They go do so, and guess what? They turn out to be a total jerk, and we just get to wait in this ion pulse for a little bit. Uh, and they turn out to be just a total jerk, and but they don't see it. The, the brain naturally turns off um, a part, like, basically, if you're in a situation where somebody else is um, doing harm to you, your brain, if you're in a relationship with them, will actually actively choose to ignore that fact. Even if you saw somebody in the exact same situation as you were in, and give them advice like, this is a bad one for you, your mind will go, I'm different though. This person's different. Here, we can even Google it real quick. If You, you know what? We're, we're gonna go Google. You ready? You ready? And I'm gonna look it up. Google liking someone bad for you. Yeah, I'm a... This is somebody who has been invo involved with me. Wow. There's, there's not a lot of help. <laughs> when I type that in, never mind. We're just gonna keep playing. Um, the uh, the point is, is that the the mind tr plays tricks on itself, and so when the mind plays tricks on itself, it makes sense because it's trying to say, um, hey, I you know want to reproduce. So let's instead of getting rid of this person, let's give them a chance. 
Um, and that makes sense in like a human kind of way. You're you're trying to succeed. You're trying to become somebody new and better, and you want somebody to love you. Um, there we go. He fired off you, but the shot of service rips through the missile's shreds. They must have planetary defense system up. Hmm. Cool, we're gonna fight. Um, so you, you know, you want to have this belief that, you know, that you're not making a mistake. Now, if your friend is doing this, and you have to communicate to them, this is a bad idea. First of all, you run into a problem. You want to go, that person's an asshole, or that person sucks for you. I see them manipulate you. They tell you things like they like you, and then they choose to do something ridiculous, like, I don't know, go and um, uh, call you horrible names and say they'll never love you again, and then suddenly leave and be like, okay, you know, I was I was angry that day. You know, people get angry, it happens. And you're like, no, like you don't ever treat someone you care about that, love that way, kind of thing. And then they'll do things where it's like, now it's good, now it's bad. And this trait, now it's good, now it's bad, is basically the way of telling someone to like, it makes it so their ha greatest happiness is also their greatest worst. And so that they end up becoming reliant on the very person who's hurting them. Uh, it, you can see this around the world where people just will be encouraging others to do negative things because it's just like, let's just take it, you know, like we can take advantage of this person because now they think they need us because we're telling them they're not pretty enough or that we're going to die if, you know, if they leave. Um, anyway, can you imagine just how difficult it is as that person in that relationship to deal with that? Um, and I mean, and imagine it even more so like if that person was actually in a relationship and they were cheated on, right? So the person they care about cheats on them and now they have to deal with, um, this scenario where the person that, you know, they thought they could trust is no total asshole is not somebody they can trust. So suddenly they're like, oh crap, you know, like, well, just forget it. You know, sometimes that's one of the responses is just pretend it didn't happen. And it can be so difficult, you know, like, and they know it's stupid. They know what they're doing doesn't make any sense. But they're still stuck in this mindset that they need, that they, they can't just let this person go. Uh, and that's just a human body thing being like, uh, maybe it's uh, okay for somebody to, you know, to see someone else other than me. And depending on the relationship, maybe you guys are polyamorous. Maybe that's the way to do it. That's totally a possibility. I'm not going to turn shoot down certain ways of living. However, the idea that um, somebody, you know, like, but the thing is, is that if you're a friend and you're watching your your other friend in this relationship suffering this constant highs and lows, suffering, being like, oh, I think it's okay, like it was a one-time thing that I, you know, I caught them cheating on me or something. Which, by the way, one has to wonder: Are they cheating? and feel bad because they cheated or are they cheating and feel bad because they got caught is another one but saying that to the person who's actually hurt is really difficult to kind of get them to undersee or undersee understand what it is you're trying to tell them um and so i have a personal method that i think works really well with talking to people when they're in relationships that are just bollocks for them now it's imperfect it's not gonna always work for everybody because it's hard to communicate with somebody who's convinced that the person that they uh, use up everything. Damn it! <laughs> it's hard to talk to someone about it because you know their light, their their mind is stuck on being with this person. Basically, um, my method is step one: is to tell the person outright, "I think this person is bad for you," for these reasons. Simple, straight up. Now, after you do that, you want to take into consideration that this person they like. So you don't want to constantly hound them and be like, hey, they're bad. Hey, bad. You break up with them yet? Hey, do you break up? Like, you want to give them some time to process the fact that your friend was like, I don't want you with that person. Um, now, your friend can rightfully be like, hey, I, I, I like them. Could we perhaps, you know, like, can you give them another chance? And then, you know, you should. I mean, but if they cheated on you, I, I don't know if necessarily I could agree with a decision like that. If the person was cheat. Um, but you know, like whatever kind of thing, like sometimes it's good to give people another chance. Um, and you have this moment where, um, I really hope that this missile takes out their ship. There we go. 
you have this moment where you have the person telling you to give them the chance. You give them the chance, but then let's say they fail it. They don't do it. They do something else stupid that's really mean to your friend, but your friend, you know, explains it away. Um, and I've had men and women do this. And it's it doesn't matter if both men and women can be tricked to falling in love with the wrong person. And both men and women can be the evil person doing it to others. This is totally just... It's just how some people are. Um, anyway, so you tell the person you don't like. And then you basically, you, you kind of set it up in a situation where you want it. And this is a problem. It's basically, you tell the person they don't like them. And some of these people will say, hey, you know, can I take this person to our party, for example? Like, let's say there's a birthday party. And one person is like, oh, can we take along the asshole? You know, I know, and the thing is, is like, but this is important. You need to make sure that they're aware that nobody, like, you don't want them to be there. And so you tell them straight, and you can go be like, I'd prefer them not to be there. You know, I prefer not to do that. And then they can go like, well, I care about them and I want them there. And you're like, okay, I get that. Understand, I prefer them not to be there. And if the person, and eventually you kind of go like, you know, I don't like them being around you either. So I, if we ever hang out, I would like to not have that person be in the vicinity if we could avoid that. This is where the problem with that theory comes from. It's important to have this talk though. It's very important to tell the person like, you don't want them around and stuff like that. But the reason why it's very, it's, there's a problem. Oh, I didn't mean to save. Uh oh, damn it. Um, the reason why there's such a problem with this though, is because it kind of puts the person in a situation where they are kind of locked out um, from their friends. They, you know, all of a sudden they're kind of, they're, they're individual and they're, it creates an ultimatum. And the ultimatum is stay with your friends or stay with the person you love. Um, but your friends, don't give you those highs like the person you love does. Now, that's the interesting part. Because they have a high from being with that person, very, very lows, but extremely high return, they want to be with the person that gives them that. That's a human trait, being addicted to things. It's very normal. It's, however, dangerous if you uh, get yourself caught in a loop. One of the biggest ways to stay stuck in an addiction loop is to be isolated. And that's where you have to be extremely careful when you're helping your friend in this scenario. Because if they're put into isolation where they're choosing between the shitty person and then their friends, they're going to take the thing, you know, they're, it's, it's an isolate. It, now all of a sudden they have, they don't see it as the person and all their 10 friends or 15 friends arguing. They see it as the person and then the group of friends. They don't actually... It, it doesn't actually solve the problem, you know, where the person now feels like they are, uh, what's the word? It doesn't solve the problem because basically you put the person in that situation where they, they don't see 10 opinions against one, they see one, one group opinion versus one love opinion. So, but you still have to kind of go and make those steps, make it so clear. Like, I don't like the person you're dating. And I would, per I would like to stay away because they treat you in these terrible ways. And they might be like, well, I want to hang out with them though. I want to be with them. You know, it's like, and I want to be with you and with them. And it's like, look, I get that you want that. Uh, but the problem is, is that they make us unhappy. And that's the trick. That's the most important thing that you want to bring up. When you are, um, anyways, um, Sure, we'll fight the ship. Um, cool. Uh, the idea here is that you, when you tell your the person that you care about, you know, your friend, that when they're with this person, it, phys it hurts you because whatever they do to them hurts you as well. When they come out in a group, it also hurts your experience with your friend because they're not as happy. They're, you know, more reserved. They're not themselves. And you basically come across and be like, you're just, because most people who are in these bad relationships, do know that the relationship is imperfect. They do click, but they, but in their mind, they're like, well, every relationship's imperfect. Everybody's trying to fix something. The thing is, is that it doesn't come across to them that they're past that one threshold where you go, no, 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 you're way beyond what just we need to fix. You're definitely in a worse scenario. Um, and that's, you know, very important to make sure that you kind of get them over that hump. But the thing is, like I said, most people already know. Like, if they, some, if the person cheated on them, they're already aware that the person they're dating is 
probably not 100%. So by going like, hey, you know, when they cheated on you, it hurt us because we were sad to see you. Suddenly you kind of take the person and pull them into that third point of view. That outside, I'm not in the relationship, that part of the brain that tells them, it's okay, you're different. It's not the kind of relationship that you typically tell people to avoid. Drinking protein. It's not the relationship that you typically try to avoid. It's, it's that now you look at it from the outside. Because suddenly they're watching their friends be hurt. So the person in the bad relationship watches you, the friend, being hurt from that person that they're dating. So just make sure I can make it very clear. I'm going to do that again. The person in the relationship with the cheating person or with the abusive person will watch your group of friends and will go, my friends are getting hurt by this one person. And then you make it very clear where you're like, it's, you're hurting. It's, and the thing is, is the way, the reason why they're here is only because of you. And it's like, you don't want to basically go, you're hurting us. That is definitely kind of a scary, like, Ugh. but you definitely want to make it clear that you, they are the one who is bringing it and you bringing this person into this existence around you. And um, I know these are hard things and there are so many contextual differences that will change this. Um, this is just my way personally that I try to do it. I try to tell the person straight up, I don't like the person. I then, you know, be, I'm aware though that they do. And so you gotta kind of, you know, be polite to the fact that they do like the person. And um, yeah, I'll take that. That they do like the person, you know, they do want to be with that person. But they're already aware that it's a bad idea. So, <laughs> once you tell them that, then you basically, you, you create not the ultimatum, but the explanation where I don't want to be with you and her at the same time or with you and him at the same time because it sucks. Like, they're, they're just kind of mean to us. And they're like, no, they're, and they can defend them. I'm like, look, I'm telling you this. Like, I want to hang out with you. Uh, but I don't want to hang out with you and them. Like... I like you. You're nice to me. This person I've told you I think is mean to you. And then it puts them in this position once again, like, but they just hurt me through you. And so it's like, I have to deal with this stuff. Uh, do not investigate. Hell no. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just jump back and forth. Um, so, but it's hard, you know, like I had, um, I had a, a, uh, a person who I cared a lot about, who was close to me, and, um, he had to suffer, okay, hold on, we're looking for the bad dudes now, I think they're in the, um, here, no, oh, they're in the shields, okay, so I, um, oh, there's four of them, shit, hmm, so it was just, you know, rough, because it was, I had somebody who I cared about, who was suffering, and this was a good friend of mine, and I watched him, and, uh, it was him. I watched him and his girlfriend, you know, deal with each other. And the thing is, is that he couldn't see how she was treating him. Um, what I ended up doing is I had another friend who at the exact same time, who was a girl, by the way, at the exact same time had an abusive guy in her life. Um, what I ended up doing is I ended up telling the close male friend in his abusive relationship about my female friend and her close, uh, uh, her abusive relationship. And the advice that he gave me, I then turned back on him. It's not an amazing, awesome thing where he was like, wow, I can't believe anyone would treat anybody that way. It's obvious that she's being pushed around. I'm like, yeah, it is. Um, do you remember when yours, like, uh, you made her breakfast and then she, like, spit at you because you didn't put leeks in it or something? Like, he's like, okay, well, she's, you know, blankety blank blank. And I was like, she was having a rough day. I'm like, yeah, uh, so was he. Don't worry, the guy I just talked to you about, he was having a rough day. The thing is, but the thing is, is, it doesn't matter how many times you tell somebody that. They themselves kind of have to make the decision to leave the relationship. And that's where, I when I keep, you know, and I'm going to start, you know, finishing this up. But, and that's where it's really hard because you, you have to tell them immediately, this is bad. You have to make it clear to them that this is bad. You then have to make it clear that you don't want to spend time with the two of them. However, you want to spend time with them, and you will make time to spend time with the good person out of that relationship that you like. You will make that time. You will go on lunch with them, you will hang out, you will do those things. 
And so, and that's, and that's kind of what you need to let them know they're not isolated, that they still have other people outside the world that they can talk to and they can relate to. So once you do that, then you create, the, you know, so it's so clear to them that, and then like that this is there, they have other options. And on top of that, you make it clear where it's like, you're hurting me by inviting this person into my life. I know it sounds really harsh. I know it's not entirely hundred percent true either. Um, because it's like, well, it, the person, they, they're not in control. It's biology of the brain. And it's also literally being controlled by, you know, just cult development techniques. It's, it's brainwashing. Um, and so it's like, they're stuck in this way. And then on the end of it, you have to be supportive of them still though, because they're suffering. They know the person they're with is bad. They know that the person cheated on them, the person hits them, the person calls them bad names. They know that person isn't nice. It's every relationship has problems. They know, and, but the thing is, is that that's what they're trying to tell themselves. And I mean, all it's true. All relationships do have strength. It's understanding the respect in them, though. I mean, and that's that's the big one. You know, the mutual respect that occurs. And if one person's doing something that the other person doesn't want them to do, they shouldn't be dating. Sometimes some of these abusive relationships are simply people who just can't split. I mean, it's literally like, if you were, let's say you were polyamorous and bisexual, and you were a girl, and you really wanted to have all the sexes that you could because you fall in love with lots of people, but you had a guy who was just a very about one person, but you both really liked each other, but as the girl, you kept leaving, it could be, it's just your biology. You know, it's like, but you shouldn't be together then because that doesn't, isn't what makes you both happy. So anyway, and that's another thing to think about because when you're talking to this person, you don't necessarily want to be like, this person sucks. You kind of want to be like, they're, you're not the right person for them. They're not the right person for you. There's many more. So anyway, to sum up, um, sometimes these things happen. Sometimes they're tough. Sometimes they come in your life and uh, it can be tough to get over it, but support your friends. Let them know how you really feel. Give them, you know, that outside, like help, keep them in a community of help them avoid being isolated. And, um, you know, you just, you got to do your best at those times. You know, sometimes that's all you can really do. Uh, but yeah, anyway, faster than light thought dry. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and thank you so much for doing so. And thank you all for letting me kind of just do this. I needed to get that off my chest. I needed to shout it out into the world. And, um, yeah, so I might do another one of these tomorrow too, depending on what comes up. Um, you know, this is very different than what I would do with this Skyrim for death role play, but emotionally, this is what needed to be done. Um, so thank you for sticking around. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments or any stories, or if you want me to talk about anything in these faster than light thought diaries, I want to do more of them. And, uh, I actually really like giving advice. Uh, yeah. What a surprise. A person who likes getting, inv giving advice, but still, um, it's really fun. I'll, I'll do another one of these and you just let me know. Okay. See you later, dudes. Ah, oh, wait. Oh my God. May the ground rise to meet your feet. The wind always be at your back and the sunshine warmly on your sexy, sexy face. There we go. All right. Bye.